Hi there, my name is Ron Rogers and this video is titled Antenna Tales from the Dark Side or How to Buy an Antenna System on the Cheap. Now for those who uh, saw my earlier video about the B-52 radar, I was able to come up with a um, very good uh, design feature that more than doubled the accuracy and the program was uh, going forward and we had to test somewhat under 300 antennas. So this was going to be a big job. We had to improve the facilities and it would be good if we could get some new equipment that would make this function just a little easier. So this is the system we used to measure the antenna patterns. It had been around for quite a while and it was reasonably labor intensive. You had to select each frequency individually and essentially run the plots by hand. Uh, very labor intensive for the individuals and with slightly under 300 uh, antennas to run, this was going to take a while. So Scientific Atlanta had a automatic antenna analyzer system they wanted to sell us, which would uh, speed this up. So that sounds like a good idea because it could free up a lot of time for the technicians and they could go on and do other things. Now my boss, Carl, uh, lives south of town in Wichita and he had a farm and I jokingly called him uh, my pig farmer boss. One day he came out to the antenna range uh, on a Saturday and I was working there and he shows up in, in Biv overalls. And the gate uh, to let people in to the antenna range was about 40 feet away from the point where we would buzz him in. And I'm looking out at this guy and I'm wondering, who the heck is this? You know, it's some guy got lost or something? It looks like a pig farmer. And, and I started to walk out there and realized it was my boss. <laughs> so yeah, I'll let him in. Okay. Well, one thing, one thing Carl tended to do, and I, at first it shocked me, but I really, really enjoyed it. Um, we would have salesmen come in to pitch a product. Now we were looking at two different systems. All right, so this is the new and improved system we got from Scientific Atlanta that we eventually settled on. But in the process before we did this, uh, we interviewed uh, Scientific Atlanta and another company that was uh, putting together automatic antenna system analyzers. And it was kind of interesting. Um, my boss, Carl, you know, the pig farmer, he had this routine that he would put on with salesmen. And the first time that he did it, it shocked me. Uh, because he kind of acted what I called, and, and nothing against peg farmers, please, uh, but he acted like he wasn't very smart in areas of electrical engineering, which probably pig farmers aren't, okay? Not, not to insult anybody. But anyway, uh, he, would act, he would ask stupid questions and make comments that were kind of, you know, they didn't make a whole lot of sense. And the reason he did this was he kind of would draw out the salesmen, and if they thought they were working with a schmuck, then they would start to embellish, you know, the capabilities of the system and, oh, it could just do the, the best things and slice bread and all that stuff. And he'd let them kind of go on. Now, Ken was a salesman from Scientific Atlanta and Ken didn't do that. Even though Carl kind of put this on, Ken didn't do that. Ken worked mostly with me later on, but Ken didn't do that. And so that, that impressed Carl, but the other guy did. And Carl let it go on for a while until he finally just turns it around. And that's when uh, it got very interesting because he kind of just said, well, that's not possible. You can't do that. You got these factors involved. And he'd write out a few equations and stuff like that, draw diagrams. And you could just see the salesmen and, you know, salesmen usually aren't the most technically qualified. They're sufficient to do the product, but you know, they're not super uh, electrical engineers um, or they would be doing that job itself. So you could see the color kind of go from their face and they know they had been had. And this was kind of fun in the future when, when I'd see Carl do this, I would just kind of sit back and go and, oh man, he is going to crucify you. You just don't know what, what has hit you. So it was interesting. And we ended up on this system, but the thing was, uh, they wanted a million dollars for this system and ugh, we didn't have the, we didn't have the money in the budget at the time to do that. And. Ken, Ken and I got along pretty well. He was the uh, uh, salesman for Scientific Atlanta, and he took me out to a bunch of restaurants in Wichita that, as an engineer, I certainly couldn't afford, and I didn't even know existed, uh, as a matter of fact. But uh, uh, it was a lot of fun, and we ended up kind of working out a deal, and he 
couldn't get me the full turnkey system as such. But what he could do is he's kind of piecing things together. So we got a lot of components that were kind of pieced together. And uh, it, we, we still had the same system. Uh, it was pieced together and we got it for $400,000, which was a, a pretty darn good saving. So we were, we were quite pleased with that. Okay, so we get the system, they set it up, check it out, and the technicians start operating it. Okay, fine. Well, I come in there one day and they are not running it in the automatic function. And I go, what's going on, guys? And they go, oh, this thing doesn't work worth, worth, work worth a crap. Oh, really? And they explained to me there was an issue with dwell time. When it would select a new frequency, it would take the longest time for the receivers to lock onto it. And if you did it manually, they would lock on immediately. So that was kind of a head scratcher, but, and, and we had great technicians. We, we had really sharp guys and they were a lot of fun to work with. Kind of like crew chiefs in the air force. They didn't suffer fools gladly. And if you didn't know what you're doing, they would let you know right away. And it's kind of funny because I, I was used to dealing with crew chiefs and these guys were kind of the same way. They were, you know, down to earth. They let you know if you were stupid. And I appreciated that. The new engineers coming out of school, of course, were used to thinking they were God's gift to uh, engineering. And when the technicians did this, it, it really kind of flustered them. But I considered it very helpful. We didn't waste a lot of time. All right. Well, the system wasn't working. Well, I go, well, these, you know, a lot of ranges have this system. You know, what's, what's, uh, we must be doing something wrong. So I started calling up the other ranges and I said, hey, we can't get it to run in the automatic function. And they go, yeah, we can't either. And I go, what? Couldn't get it to work, dwell time issue, you know. So I called the next range. Ah, we can't get it to work either. I called every range that was using this system that I knew of, and they couldn't get it to work. So I called up Ken at Scientific Atlanta and said, hey, your system doesn't work. And he goes, oh, no, that's, that's, that's impossible, you know. And so I started quoting everybody who said it didn't work. And he goes, hmm. Well, naturally, Scientific Atlanta being told that their system was not what they thought their system was, got a lot of attention from uh, very high up. So I had a high level uh, vice president come out with several technicians uh, to look at this. And uh, uh, ostensibly, I think he had the attitude that he was going to show me how, you know, we were screwing this up and how, you know, we just didn't know what we were doing. And, you know, Wichita is very dry and his nice polished shoes got very dusty walking down to uh, our setup there. And they got their technicians and they sat down and they were going to show us how it worked. And they're going, hmm, that doesn't work. And I said, yeah, it doesn't work for anybody. And it wasn't just that this was a B-52 radar. Other people were doing other antennas. So it wasn't, you know, something just specific to this. And they came to the conclusion that this system really didn't work. Uh, at least not as efficiently as you could do it manually. So they went back. They, uh, they, they had several other visits. They did some software modifications and they got it. So they, they, uh, resolved the receiver dwell time issue. So the thing could operate as, uh, quickly as, uh, in automatic function as the technicians could operate it. So they, uh, solved the problem and we had a working system and I ended up, uh, getting recalled, uh, to, uh, my airline job. So I left before the big onslaught of antennas come in, but as far as I know, everything worked all right. So thanks for watching.